Well, that was, was fun. fun. <laughs> All right, All right. We're, uh, we're, definitely we're definitely recording a backup, backup today, today because, because Gattily knows, knows what's, what's going to actually, actually happen. happen. So, so welcome, welcome morning, 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 Huge, Huge echo. echo. Okay. okay. Uh, where's the echo coming? Oh, oh, right. Where's coming from? I know where the echo's coming from. There, echo should be gone now. Okay. So, um, sorry if you're just watching this not live and you want to skip past the morning garbage. Just scroll down and there will be a link to the actual start of the show. Um, goodness. Okay. I think we're good. I think we're good now. Uh, people are on the right chat. So. I'm not really sure what happened here. Wirecast, as you know, is what I use for my streaming. Um, you know, if you start 15 minutes early like you should, you set everything up, you hit stream, everything goes and works perfectly. If you, however, wait until the last minute, that's when things go to hell. So um, what appears to have happened, first of all, I've been playing with streaming at a higher quality, the, the 6K setting instead of the 4.5K, and it's been working fine, but for some reason today I just didn't want to. And I turn it on and off, turn it on and off, use the backup server, nothing's happening. Basically, Wirecast is encoding, but not streaming, I guess would be the right way to put it. So YouTube sees nothing, Wirecast, the green light is on, but there's no countdown or count up telling me that it's actually streaming. Reboot the system, still didn't work. Dropped it to 4.5K, um, and that worked. That started streaming, but somewhere in that process, it switched over to my Live Now show, and then this one wouldn't work. Anyway. So we shut it all down again, started it back up with the right thing, and it appears that we're on line and ready to go. I see the chat, I see people in the room, these are good things. The we're not online yet message appears to be gone. Excellent, I think we're good. Um, fantastic, let's just take a quick little look at the morning comments. Everybody already tuning in is throwing comments up. I love it, you're wonderful. I'm gonna get this, I, gotta, I need to get another one of these for over here, that's what I gotta do, because using a mouse for this is just silly talk. All right, good morning, Achita. Standing by, you were there early. Thank you. Good morning, Jess. You were in too before the show started. And congrats on 4K. I broke 4K sometime in the middle of the night, which is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, looks like I missed one hell of a show yesterday. You did. That was an awesome show. And thank you for the congrats on the donations. And yeah, you said Super Chat's not available on iOS. Um, weird. I guess it isn't. That's unfortunate. So uh, yeah, again, for those who were not here yesterday, Super Chat was like insane yesterday. So many people throwing money into the Super Chat system. And I totally get that that is not going to happen every day. But it is a really cool thing if you, you know, just even put a dollar in and make sure that your chat gets highlighted. Because when there's a big show like yesterday's, what we had 150 viewers yesterday. Um, it does, and there's so many comments flying by, it does ensure that I actually see your question. And obviously, it helps to support the show. The other way to support it is, of course, through Patreon, which will have that little animation pop up in the bottom here in a moment, but photojustice.com slash Patreon for a monthly regular contribution. All, all wonderful things. So thank you again, everybody yesterday who contributed. It was just off the hook cool. That was really, really great. Um, so Joel says, people in Germany receiving their GH5 today, here in the US, not yet. Wow, interesting. That's cool. Well, they are, you know, in the future in Germany, right? and all of you are, you know, eight or nine hours in the future. So maybe yours is coming today, too. Uh, just as a quick question, do you have a preference for support? Oh, pre oh, there you go. Currently do Patreon, but I'll switch if you prefer. Uh, Patreon seems to take less of a revenue. So Patreon's great because it's a set it and forget it, right? I mean, that's, I can rely on it, right? Patreon, I know, okay, there's X dollars coming in. Sure, some people are going to cancel, some will add on. But for the most part, it'll grow, hopefully, to a point where I know I can rely on it. This I can't rely on because it's, it's on the whim of a moment. So Preference, preference, pref preferably speaking, I think Patreon would be better, but I totally get that people don't like to do monthly things. We have, I mean, how many monthly subscriptions do we each have that we really don't, you kind of forget about and you go, my God, I'm putting $5 here, $10 there, it adds up. I get it. So if you prefer to just do the one one off, then that is great too. I, I'm grateful for all of it, whatever's convenient for you, so thank you. Um, and you're saying that Super Chat in Google takes something like 30%. I thought it was lower than that. I thought it was five. And maybe I'm confusing them because you're saying Patreon's five. Um, Ryan, do me a favor. Look it up. See if you can figure that out, what the, the cut is that uh, Google takes on, on this for the Super Chat. Uh, I thought it was lower, but maybe you're right. Maybe it is 30, in which case that's a lot. Okay, uh, just a sorry for a long post. Uh, I guess one of your comments. No worries. We're, we're going to get to all this good stuff. Um, lucky people in Germany, yes. So then we got into my whole Wirecast and streaming part. Now we're back. Sully, you're back. I saw you, Sully. You were commenting on the other one, but that stream is gone. That was a temp thing. That was an accident. Good morning, Sean. Good to see you this morning. ICE Entertainment. Good morning, Roxy. Uh, Burns Tech is back. Leo is here. I hit 4K subs. Yes, I did. Thank you very much. 
Uh, this is a good local time in Latvia. Serge, thank you very much. Um, that is too cool. Uh, let's see, switched to 30p. Who, me? No. No, I'm still streaming at 24. Streaming at 24. Um, let's see. Yes, let's talk zebras. Excellent. That's the topic of the day. Good morning from Norway. Uh, good morning in London, or good afternoon, good evening in London. Yo, Sully's bringing food again. You brought cinnamon rolls now? What? You like every day you got food in there, you're telling us all about it. I don't know about this. I don't know. You can like a two way video chat, you can show us your food. Really make us hungry. Uh, could could see the super chat activity on iOS, but could not contribute. So that's that's another. There's another good reason to do Patreon. It doesn't matter where you are. Um, I guess iOS doesn't support the super chat. And I know super chat's also not supported in every country. It's limited to where it is. It's also quite new. So hopefully that thing will expand over time. Uh, Christoph Sarah's. I've been following your videos the last couple of weeks. This is my first live one. Welcome, welcome, Christoph. Is I'm in Maine. Maine, excellent. Maine's a lovely place. I'm sure I have not been, but I really need to go there sometime. Preferably in the fall. Keep up the good work. I shall certainly plan on trying to do that. Uh, Google takes a good chunk, Bur Burns says. Well, dang it. You know, mm. it's frustrating. But hey, it's it's all it's all part of the game. Um, anyone here got, Der uh, Dimitris is asking, if anyone here has got their GH5 yet, pre-ordered yesterday. Man, you waited a long time. You may have to wait a little bit. Uh, someone said two month back order, but I don't, that was one report I've heard of that. That could just be the reseller. Um, I think it was actually saw it on Amazon, but it could just be, you know, misinformation. You never know. It could be alternative facts. Let's just leave it that way. Uh, use the GH5 for about a month as your Panasonic promoter, Fuse DZN. Excellent. Uh, but you can say the camera isn't released today. Oh, well, there you go. I think I think I saw something about 30th somewhere along the way. What's today? 22nd? So, I, I, I don't know. Uh, oh, terrorist attack in London at the moment. You're in lockdown. Oh, good Lord, Martin. I'm sorry about that. I did see a headline, something about they're treating it as a terrorist attack. So, breaking news. I'm not sure. That's all I saw was the headline fly by on CNN alerts, and I was getting ready for this. I didn't have time to look at it. Um, hopefully, oh, God, terrible thing. I hope every hope it's okay. I hope it all turns out okay. Hope nobody was killed. Jesus. Oh, such a fabulous start to the day, isn't it? Um, okay. So he says Amazon says the 30th, and uh, Marvin's saying my GH5 comes tomorrow. So it's all over the place. Um, scheduling, sh schedule shipping, it's all over. Okay. Let's get this show on the road and um, and get that. Okay. One last question out of here. Burns Tech says, hey, Joseph, for indoor shooting, what's your preferred color temp for lighting? I like to work in daylight. I like daylight lighting, daylight temperature. If I'm working with my LEDs, they're usually at daylight. I'll balance the camera to that. Strobes, obviously, are daylight balanced. Um, I will custom white balance to that. And then the nice thing about working with the LEDs, I've shown off my, um, my, my uh, what are they called? The Felix lights before. I'll do a whole show on them at some point. I did a long time ago, but I'll do another one. Uh, they're really cool because they're color temperature tunable, and then you can warm or cool the scene from there, which is really neat. But I usually just start in daylight. It's just, I don't know, it's easier. It's light. Like, one of the things, if you're shooting with the camera, like, this, like a mirrorless camera where you're seeing through an EVF, not an optical viewfinder, so an electronic viewfinder, you're seeing what the camera sees. And if you're shooting in strobe and you've set, see, so how am I doing this right? If you're shooting in strobe, the strobes are set to daylight, but the ambient light in the room is not daylight. Then what you see through the camera when you're focusing and so on is going to be a funky white balance because your white balance is set to the strobes. Until you take a picture, the white balance looks wrong. When you're shooting, um, if you're shooting ambient light, then it's going to match to that. So that's one of those kind of weird little differences that happens in there, but you know, whatever. Okay. All right, let's get this thing started. Uh, yeah. All right, let's do the show. <laughs> let's do this thing. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, first live daily show on photo things on the YouTube things every weekday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. If you're not watching live, you should be. Tune in live. It's super fun. You get to chat. I get to respond to your questions and um, it's just more entertaining. Frankly, it is. Okay, today's topic, we're talking about zebra striping. Zebras is not just for animals anymore. Um, so zebra, does a zebra, is it a black horse with white stripes or is it a white horse with black stripes? That is the question of the day. Damn it, I should have, I need my zebra stripe. Don't bring me my zebra stripe mug. Um, zebra striping is this really, really cool thing that shows up in all Lumix cameras, I'm assuming all mirrorless cameras that shoot video, I can't imagine why they wouldn't. Um, and I think it'll, it even shows up in pretty much any camera that shoots video. It's like a really basic video thing. And a zebra stripe, as you may have seen in the thumbnail for this video, are these stripes, lines that go across the scene that tell you where you're overexposed. So the big question striping comes into play. And what we're going to do today is I'll show you how to turn on zebra striping on your Lumix camera. Or, I mean, it's, you know, the menus will be different on your camera. The functions will be there undoubtedly. 
One of the cool things that we have on here that again, I'm sure is on a lot of cameras, a lot of mirrorless cameras, is you can set dual zebra stripe settings and you can toggle between them. So here's, here's a very basic idea of zebra striping. You look at a scene just like in still photography, videos the same way, you've got a maximum brightness point and a maximum minimum brightness point. You're, you're zero for dark and you're 100 for white or 255 for white, depending on how you're measuring it. But at some point, it's too bright, right? And it's overexposed. And if you were shooting JPEG, you'd be clipping that off and you'd be throwing away that data. If you're shooting raw, you might have that data and be able to pull it back in. When you're shooting video, it's more like shooting JPEG in that you probably don't have a lot of headroom to pull back. You might be able to pull a little bit back depending on how you're shooting, what format you're shooting, codec and so on and so on, bit rate and so on, or bit depth rather, and so on. But at the end of the day, you really want to keep everything within range when you're shooting video as well as in stills. You want to keep everything from being overexposed. And so what zebra striping allows you to do is turn on something in the camera so that you literally see little lines, little zebra lines pop up over areas of your image that are overexposed. Now you can set what overexposed mean. Does it mean anything over 100%, so pure white? Or do I want to back it down a little bit? Do I want to back it down to maybe 95%? So just give myself a little bit of headroom in there so if I hit that point, um, I know that I still got a little bit of space to go. Do I want to go into super white? mode? Do I want to go up to 100, 510% because I know that I can capture a broader range. So I'm going to go ahead and capture that broader dynamic range and fix it in post. That's totally up to you, your camera, what you're used to, what you're comfortable with, the capabilities of your hardware and so on. But the point is that you choose what that super white level is. And so we're going to start by just doing super white at 100% just to see how this whole thing goes. Okay. So we're going to, um, point it at something. I'm going to point at the lights. That's going to be a good one. I'm going to point this camera at the lights and we'll adjust it to bring the exposure down on here. Now, here, here's one of the, before I get into this part, one of the things to think about. If you set it to uh, 100% super white. Oh, excellent. Thank you for the super chat. Look at that. And again, I can't see the names. This is, let me try and adjust my window here. For some reason, my interface messes up yet. Yeah, even if I make the font really small so that I can't read it for some reason on my screen, maybe it's a, a Safari thing instead of Chrome. I'll have to try that next time. Starkey. Ed Starkey? Yeah. Ed Starkey. Thank you very much, Ed Starkey, for throwing in a, a, a bit of money here. You are the awesomest. Um, I provide tons of info, info, and I'm not afraid to try things live. You are the blueprint what a Panasonic luminary should be. Oh, thanks. Don't tell it to the other luminaries. Thank you. I really appreciate that. That is that is super cool. And I'm not afraid to try things live because, you know, live is fun. Okay. Um, uh, where was I? Oh, right. So the, the, if you just set it to hundred percent, let's say that, you know, you're going to go for hundred percent and then you're just shooting in your everyday life, shooting, vlogging type stuff, whatever, just shooting things and you never peak. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're not overexposed because if you set it to hundred percent, that means that something has to be pure white. And then over that to be overexposed, right? If I took a white card, right? If I put a white card in the scene and I adjust exposure until that is peaking until I'm getting zebras and then I back off a little bit. Great. That's accurate. But if the brightest thing that I have in my scene is gray and I expose it to the point that this is peaking and back off of it while I'm overexposed, right? So you need to keep in mind the context of the scene, having zebra striping set at a hundred or 95 or 90 even can be quite useful just for daily shooting. Just to, you'll always see, oh, there's that bright cloud in the sky. Let's make sure that's backed off a little bit. There's a, a shiny white car. will back off a little bit. So you do have that guideline. But what I'm going to show you today is how to use skin tone as a reference, uh, specifically your own skin tone, which can be very, very handy as well. So there's kind of a, a, an overview of what the uh, zebra striping is. Let's go ahead and turn this guy on. So I'm going to let's re recompose this shot. I'm going to go really wide on here. Um, what are we going to, we're going to point out? We're just going to go, we're just going to go like, like there for now. Let's focus that and switch over to this camera. And let's go into Zebra. So to turn it on, I'm going to go into my menu setting and first of all, to see where to configure it. So we're on the GH5 now. So if you're using anything else, it's going to look a little bit different, but it's under monitor display. You go down here and you'll find Zebra pattern. And in this case, I can turn on Zebra 1, Zebra 2 and set. And we'll come to the set later. I'm going to set on Zebra 2 to begin with. And it comes on and right now I don't see any Zebras, but let's take the exposure up. I'm going to open up the lens 
open up, open up. And there we start to see the zebra striping. So you're seeing that zebra striping showing up. So I know that that screen there is absolutely without question, let's focus the camera, is overexposed. So if that's pure white, and I know that should be pure white, then I can back this down, back it down until that is no longer striping. Now the light itself, okay, that's striping, but that's fine because I'm not, I'm not trying to expose the lamp. I'm trying to expose, let's say, that screen in the background there, right? So again, if I if I uh, open this up a little bit, we're at 3.5 there, you can see it's starting to stripe, back it down, back it down, now we're good. But again, that doesn't necessarily mean that that is, is, um, is accurate exposure because I don't know if that, I, I know, but is that really as bright as I want it. So I could do something like take the white. So let's, let's do this. My lights are pointing the wrong direction to do this in, but we're gonna you know, set this here. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, I'm just trying not to knock my water over. And let's point this in here. And let's go back to this view. Oh, man, I'm almost out of battery on this thing. Hopefully I get through the show. And so now I've got something that is white. So I can, again, open this up until it starts to zebra. There it is, zebra, I can back that off. And now I know that that is not going to be overexposed. But I've said this, yet I don't know yet where my zebra is set to. So let's go back into the settings here, monitor zebra pattern, and go into set. And I chose zebra two, which is currently set at 100%. So that's telling me that anything that is brighter than 100% is going to zebra strike. So that's, that's fine if I know I'm shooting something pure white, but this is not necessarily helpful for your everyday general shooting. So one of the recommendations, and this isn't you know, new, this isn't new news, but one of the recommendations, if you're shooting a lot of people, uh, very convenient if you're, if you're vlogging, you're shooting yourself kind of a thing, is to set your zebra striping at 70%, which is a good average human skin tone area, and then watch zebraing on there. And if you're striping on at 70% on someone's face, you're probably overexposing the whole scene. Now, obviously this is going to depend on how light or dark the person's face is. And so that 70% is absolutely not a universal but I wanna show you how you can set this for your own skin tone. And that's where this can get really cool for the whole vlogging set. So before I do that, let me do a quick scroll back to the comments here and see if there's anything that I've missed. Going back a little bit before that super chat, which again, thank you so much for that I did. Um, let's see here, Fuse says, funnily enough, I was told about Joseph from someone I was demoing the GH5 to, that's awesome. <laughs> right on, Sean says, your GH5 will ship by 3.30, according to, uh, what, you know, who that's according to, but it says ships by 3.30, 2017, by is such an ambiguous word, I know, I know, right? Um, but that could mean before, right? It could mean before 3.30, which would be great. And uh, Sarah says, you've ordered the last one for the first batch in Latvia, excellent. Can't wait for you to get yours. Autorama has the first in, but Paulus, but first in, but policy for the GH5 pre-order. So right, so uh, people who pre-ordered are getting them first. That would make sense. I'd uh, love to hear my personal zebra settings. You're about to get them. So, and then, oh, you're saying that uh, Leo is saying you have two settings. First at 65% for skin tones and second at 95% for general use. So your skin tone one might be right on, but we're gonna, we're gonna take a look at exactly how to set that up. Um, so it is right on. Uh, a couple of other people popping in. Good morning, Grant from Vegas. Good morning, Zachary, um, also in Vegas. And, uh, and go on. Excellent. Yeah, Serge, you're saying click the balloon at the top. It shows more details. It does, but the name is still overlapping. I think it's, a, I'm using Safari here. I'll switch to Chrome for tomorrow. The bubble is overlapping the name. It's it's a weird little thing. Okay. Um, oh, Fuse, the very, very good point. Fuse is saying it's also worth noting your luminance levels are set too. You can have full range of luminance from 0 to 256, 16 to 256, or 16 to 235. 16 to 235. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. 0 to 256, that's your full range black to white. 16 to 256, which brings up the floor a little bit, or 16 to 235, which brings down the ceiling. So it brings your blacks and your whites down a little bit. The general way to shoot, uh, and I think the way the cameras are set by default is 16 to 235. So we know that we, if we underexpose our shadows, we're, we're done. There's gonna be nothing showing up in there. If we overexpose our highlights, if we don't go too high over, we can probably bring that down a little bit. So general wisdom is 16 to 235. 256 uh, is your kind of preferred range to set the camera in. And that's gonna be by default in there. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, Martin saying can't see the names either in Internet Explorer. So, okay, we'll definitely switch to Chrome tomorrow. All right, and uh, someone else is saying, oh, Martin is saying that 70% to me and Google takes 30% off the, off the Super Chat. So they are taking a chunk in there, interesting. Okay, and when you see me typing, it's not me, that's Ryan typing in the other room on my account. Okay, uh, and I do see Zachary saying, should you donate, 
should do a donate feature, do you do a, you noted a PayPal? I do have a PayPal. Um, it's it's Joseph at photojoseph.com. So thank you if you want to go that way. I'll take that as well. I will take any support I can get no matter how you want to throw it. So thank you again. Okay, uh, let's go back to let's go back to this. So I want to set this up for skin tone. All right, so go back to this camera. And again, in the zebra settings, I can go in here and I can set this to whatever I want. So let's just start with 70 because that's kind of a general, this is what you want to set if you're shooting people mode. So I'm going to turn this thing around. Let's make sure that I'm not tangling up my cables here. This is going to be, this is going to be frighteningly horrible. And uh, look at that, it's, did it focus on me? It's focused, okay. So I'm gonna turn my screen around so I can see it. All right, so now I've got zebra striping set to where is it? I've, oh, you know what? Here, let me show you this real quick. I did not do this yet. I have programmed Zebra into one of the buttons on here. Uh, let's bring this up here. I have programmed it into, what number is that? It's the FN4 button, this one here. So if I, as I push that, it's going to toggle through. In fact, here I can do this. If I do it like this, you should be able to see it. Come here, here we go. As I toggle that, you see it goes zebra one at 70, zebra two at 100, and zebra off. So this is one of those very kind of handy presets to set up. And I didn't come up with this. I found this on a, a great website about GH4 configuration. Put that there because you're going to probably want to cycle through it quite often. Okay, so I'm putting this, I'm going to uh, do this while I'm looking through the viewfinder, which is going to be quite tricky. So let's, uh, let's do this here, point this back at me, point this at me, there we go, focus that. Okay. I am at, you can see the, make sure I can see, you can see the uh, the exposure setting, aperture is 3.5, I've got 180 degree shutter, I am in manual ISO of 400. <laughs> I was first setting this up this morning, I had it on auto ISO, I didn't realize, why is it not changing exposure if I'm changing aperture? <laughs> manual ISO, good idea. Okay, so as I change my aperture, we should see the image getting bar brighter and darker. Yes, we do, excellent. So let's open it all the way back up to 2.8. Now I'm gonna hit that button if I can find it. Here we go. There's there's zebra at 70% and there's zebra at 100. So even at 100, I'm peaking on there. So like we know this is overexposed at that point. But if I'm relying on zebras at 100, I should look here. If I'm relying on zebras at 100 and I back this down, I get to there, I go, oh look, the zebras are gone. Let's go back, there we go, zebras are gone. But if the zebra's gone at that point, it, that means that my skin is just under max, just under 100 and that is, that's not good, right? Because that means I'm definitely overexposed. Uh, so we don't like that. So what is going to be appropriate skin tone? We said 70, right? So let's let's go back to the let's go back to this view and let's try 70. So we go back here, zebra off, toggle through the 70. So now it's the 70. So now let's back it down, back down the exposure until zebra is gone off of me. And that might be right. It looks a little dark on my LCD, but I don't really know, right? I don't really know whether that is accurate or not because I'm not. I don't know if my skin is 70% of what it is. So I can adjust that percentage, right? It can be 70, it be 75, it be 65, whatever. And we had a commenter say they, they use 65. Well, let's find out what an accurate exposure is. We'll do that using our handy dandy gray card. So let's forget about your zebra striping for a moment. I'm, let's go back to this view. And I realize when I'm in this view, it's going to be slightly out of sync. Um, I think it is. Actually, wow, it seems like it's less. That's actually really interesting. It feels either not out of sync or way less out of sync than it usually be. Comment, please, tell me how the sync is looking on that end because this is the first time that I have pointed the GH5 at myself on the HDMI out, and it feels like there's way less latency than there was off the GH4. That would be very, very cool if it is. So please tell me in the comments how the sync is looking when I am on the GH5 camera there. Um, okay, so now we're gonna use the gray card. So I've turned off zebra striping. I wanna get a actual accurate exposure using my gray card, right? So we're gonna pull this thing up. I'm gonna get out of the way of the shot. Let's uh, go back to this camera. And now I'm adjusting the aperture until I'm neutral. Let's, let's get that here. Let's get that right into the shot there. Um, oops, um, zebras are still on. Let's turn off zebras. And there we go. And I'm adjusting until I am even. And I know that I'm even because I'm looking at the histogram in the middle. You see the histogram right in the middle, it's white. So there it's yellow. I'm a little bit underexposed. There, it's um, it's gone to yellow again. It's a little under, so I go down here, and I'm also if I look down at the bottom, you see your plus and minus zero. There, it says it's a little over, and you need a little wiggle room in there, but we're gonna go with that. So what is that? F five point six. Okay, F five six is accurate. So now we know that F five six on this camera in this light with the gray card, that's accurate. Okay, cool. 
But that's, I'm, that's not where I'm going to be all the time, is it? No, but that's not what we care about. What we care about is the zebra striping, remember. So we just set it so that the camera is now perfectly exposed. We know the camera is perfectly exposed. So now I'm going to go to the zebra stripe settings and I'm going to play with different settings until I see my skin start to peak on zebra striping. And when I know it's there, I got to back it down a little bit and then we've got the right setting. So let's go through that. I will go into this mode here, which I kind of have to lean around here to see. We we'll go into the custom monitor display zebra patterns. We're going to be working with zebra one and we're going to set zebra one is at 70 right now. Let's uh, well, we're going to leave it at 70 and see what happens. OK, so we're leaving it at 70. Let's go back to this view and turn on my zebra striping at 70 percent. OK, so am I peaking? I'm peaking. This tells me I'm overexposed, but I'm not overexposed. I know that I'm not overexposed, right? But this is telling me that I am based off the zebra striping. So now I know that my zebra striping setting is not correct because uh, if I looked at this, I would think, oh, I need to make this darker. OK, 5.6, we know, remember, 5.6 is where we want to be. So if I go down to 6.3, go down to 7.1, if I was relying on that 70 percent, um, 70% zebra stripe, I would be assuming right now that I am correctly exposed, but I would be wrong because we know that 5.6 is a correct exposure. So now let's fix the zebra striping. So let's go back into these settings here, bring this up. Let's go to zebra stripe. It says I'm over. That means I need to raise this higher. Let's go up to 75%. So 75% for me, let's see how that looks. Great, look at that. If I go, let's open it up a little bit. Boom, I opened it up just to F5 and it shows me that I'm zebra striping, I'm overexposed. Back down to 5, 5.6, stripes goes away. Now I know that for my skin tone, 75% is the way to go. Now it's the middle of winter. Well, it's technically spring, still feels like winter out here. I'm pale. I know that come summertime, my skin's gonna get darker, this is gonna change. So I'm going to need to make some adjustments to that. If I'm shooting someone with darker skin or lighter skin, I'm gonna need, need to make adjustments to that. But that is how you can set it calibrated for your skin value, if you will, um, for doing vlogging type stuff. Now, if you're just shooting, if you've got people all over the place, then 70, I think, is a very good middle of the road value. Um, you know, I'm not super pale. I'm obviously not super dark. So 75 right now, 70 is probably good. If I was a bit darker, I'd go down to 65. It just depends on what you're doing. But I think 70 is just a good general purpose setting. Um, yeah, general purpose setting. And so you saw in my camera, it was set to 70 for one of them, and then I had it at 100 for the other. I tend to be comfortable with it at 100 because I know that I can pull back highlights a little bit, and if I'm really looking at bright areas, I'll set it to 100, and I'll back down a little bit from there. But you might want to set it to 95 just so you're a little bit more, give you a little bit more wiggle room. It, it just it depends on you and your preferences. And really, ultimately, at the end of the day, it just takes experience, right? You set the camera the way that you think it should be. Uh, shoot. Go out and shoot, use your zebras, live off your zebras, live and die by them. Look at your footage and go, you know, everything feels a little bit underexposed or everything feels a little bit overexposed. I can adjust my zebras so that I have that guideline in there that calibrates to my style of shooting, the look that I want. Some people like a brighter image, darker image. It's completely up to you, ultimately how it sets, but you just gotta find something that you like and that you're comfortable with. So that is how zebra stripes work and how you can calibrate them for your personal skin tone. And uh, Zachary, thank you very much for another contribution in there. Awesome, thanks for teaching us what zebras have to do with cameras. Well, there you go. <laughs> it's a good title, right? This is, what does a zebra have to do with cameras? Super, all right, guys. Well, that's what I wanted to show you. Let me scroll back through the comments, see if there's anything else, and then we're gonna, uh, gonna get out of here today. The comments flying by, I love it, love it. 80 people watching live today. This is fantastic. You guys are so cool. Okay. Um, mm -hmm, let's see. There's that PayPal question. We hit that. Um, yeah. Plus one for PayPal. Serge is saying, oh, you know, I, I totally forgot. Uh, I wanted to show you a picture that came in from, um, I think, I think was it was Yeterne. I think the name was Yeterne from a fellow in Slovenia who, uh, some of you know, my wife is from Slovenia. And uh, let me make sure that I'm getting the name right. And, uh, uh, he, was, he sent me an email just asking some questions about the GH5 stuff and noted that uh, he's from Slovenia. And I said, oh, well, did you know that I'm from Slovenia as well? I mean, I'm from Slo my wife is from Slovenia as well. Yes, I'm Slovenian, can't you tell? And uh, that was just, that was really cool. It was Andre, not your name, sorry, Andre from Slovenia sent this. So he sent me a picture and he said, I've been using my GH5 for years and I love it. And I thought, GH5, what, what? No, hold on a second, you're wrong. And then he sent me a picture of what he meant. I, I meant to share this yesterday and I forgot to. Look at that, there's his GH5. 
<laughs> He's got a GH2 plus a GH3 equals GH5. So Andre, thank you for sharing that. I thought that was just a, that was just too cool. That was a really cute thing to see. Uh, and I just wanted to share that with you and give you a little shout out. So uh, thanks again and greetings to you in Slovenia. Okay, uh, back to the comments here. Let's see here. Yeah, Martin's saying that the YouTube removed fan funding. Uh, oh, fan funding was 5%. Plus twenty five percent. That's where I got that from. Okay, yeah, they did remove fan funding. I, I don't know why. Hopefully, they're replacing it with something better than the super chat that will, you know, be not just for live. Because you know, like this video. Okay, so there's eighty of you watching now. I will have eight hundred, maybe eight thousand views on this video later, and you know, as the channel goes, it gets up to eighty thousand and so on. But um, that's. Those are all missed opportunities for Super Chat. So yeah, I agree. They need to do something better than that. Okay, uh, let's see here. Herbus, Herba, Herba Provencual is asking, are FN buttons fixed or do they change if you change between photo and video mode? They are the same for photo and video mode. Um, that's always been that way. You know, this, let me just take a quick look. Let's, we'll see if that has changed in here, but I don't think it has. You can change the FN buttons to different functions if you are in um, playback or recording mode but I don't think you can change it between video and still. It'd be great if you could. Although my things might get a little confusing, but obviously that would be a choice. Um, let's see, where are the FN buttons set in the GH5? Let me figure out where they are, and then I will... Let me just switch over to this view, who cares? Um, here, let me get this out of the way so you're just looking at the gorgeous table here. Look at that. Let's underexpose this shot so you can look at... You're not looking at something blown out. Look, there's my metallic tabletop for you. Okay, let's go into the menu settings, um, and it's going to be under... Probably under here. Let's see here. Uh, looking for the FN settings, FN settings, FN settings. Uh, oh, see, I don't even remember where all this stuff is. It's too much, too many settings. I mean, there's not, obviously, but. Oh, wait, maybe it's in operations. Let's see here. Uh, FN button set. There we go. Now, so record and play mode. That's all you've got. So in replay mode here, well, not replay, in record mode here, these are the ones that I have. FN4 was the one that I set to zebra striping. But you may recall I mentioned in a video that I did when I was in Florida for the Lumix Summit, Luminary Summit thing, um, the one that I thought I was doing live, but I wasn't. <laughs> well, uh, I learned something there that was one of those, this made it worth the entire trip. To reprogram a function button, all you got to do is push and hold on a button for a few seconds. Let me show you. Now, let me flip this thing around here. So that it is pointing at my B cam. There we go. Get that on the B cam. Oops, my thing is coming loose. Let's tighten that down a little bit so it doesn't move. There we go. Point that at the B cam. Let's go to that. And so if I want to reprogram this button here, FN4, if I just push it, obviously it brings up you know what I've programmed it to do. But watch this. Push, hold, one, two, three. Two seconds, three seconds, and there we go. Now I can choose a different command for that. Isn't that just the coolest thing ever in that? I don't know how far back that goes, um, but it's been around for a while from what I've been told. So there you go. How's that for cool? Okay, uh, let's see here. Other other questions. Fuse DZN is saying, I'm not sure if you have VLOG under GH5. I do not. But unless you use the VLOG View Assist to check your exposure, you'll need to set different levels for zebras. Oh, interesting. Okay, I have virtually this much experience with VLOG because I never, actually that's not true. I did have a GH4 with it on, but I never got around to using it. Um, I plan on doing a lot of stuff with vlog once I get it, but I do not have the vlog update yet for this camera. So, so there you go. <sighs> uh, let's see here. Trevor uh, says, I find zebras to be nothing more than guesswork. Always opt for waveforms for precise exposure. Waveforms are absolutely fantastic as well. And we will cover those in another video. Lots of different ways and you can use them both simultaneously. Remember, zebras are for peaking. Zebras are for peaking. Waveforms will show the entire exposure. We'll get into those another day. Um, sounds like the, the, the sync between this camera and real time was perfect. That's incredible. I've, I'm, you can see how far back I am on the comments now. So that is great. Sean's saying only a frame or two. Now, uh, that could also be a YouTube thing, but it looks like we are at least way, way better than we were with the GH4. So that is great. And every, everybody else is saying not out of sync. So Sean, if you're seeing it out of sync, maybe it's a little YouTube -y thing, but who knows? Also, your eyes might be hyper accurate. Being a filmmaker, one would hope so. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Zachary says, funny when Ryan comments on the account, it's like my alter ego is telling me something. You know what, Ryan, let's change this next time. Let's have you logged in as your account and give you ad admin access, and that will make things a little bit less confusing. Um, I think that would probably be a good way to do it. 
Okay, uh, look at all that face tracking. The face tracking is so cool, right? Uh, let's see here. Silly saying, that's what I'm talking about. These cameras can do face tracking. It's just I can't focus fast enough. Hopefully the GH5 changes this. And yeah, I will be... Okay, I know I, I've, kept, I've said you know, since I got the camera, I'm going to be doing all these tests that people have been requesting. Um, I just, I haven't gone out to do a shoot yet to do all these tests, but I will. Don't worry. It's going to happen. I promise. Um, I guess I'm just a slightly, well, I'm just crazy busy. That's what that really comes down to. Okay, let's see here. Any other comments on here that are any other questions I want to hit? Um, Fuse is talking a little bit more about Vlog and Zero. I'm not going to address it since I'm not familiar with it. I cannot address that intelligently, so I will not open mouth and insert foot. Uh, let's see here. Zebras are for brightness. They're for peaking. So right for zebras are for peaking. There is focus peaking, which is a separate thing. Okay, so focus peaking and zebra striping, two totally separate things. Focus peaking is what we saw in yesterday's video. We were doing the macro focusing, and you saw the little blue sparkles, which you can change the color of, that showed up over your subject to show another day. Actually, let's just do it right now because honestly, it's like it's not like it takes a long time to, to show. Uh, let's see, we go into manual focus. It's already on. So here, I'm just, I'm not even going to flip the camera around. Let's just do this. Go to this view. Let's get the exposure. Oops, wrong one. Let's get the exposure up. So let's get rid of the striping on there. Actually, I'm just going to turn off the striping entirely. And so now you see those blue lines on there. That is the focus peaking. I'm in manual focus. So as I change the focus on here, you see the peaking coming and going. Let's scroll down to the keyboard here. So I was trying to focus on the keyboard there the blue on there shows me focus peaking. So now you have two different modes for focus peaking. Let's see where the heck this is. Um, let's see here, focus settings. It's probably under there. For having a quick autofocus, G2 autofocus assist, pinpoint autofocus, that's not it. Focus release priority, MF assist, that's not it. Um, wait, did I just pass it? I must have passed it, it has to be in here. Focus switching, focus release priority. Where the heck is focus peaking? You know what, I, God, I swear. The menus, they're better, but it's there's so many things. You know what? This needs like a Siri type of a, an activation where you just say, enable focus peaking or show me the focus peaking menu. It has to be under focus release shutter, right? Let's just go to the top. Autofocus, pinpoint autofocus, focus switching autofocus, manual focus assist. It's not manual focus assist. That is where it pushes into the frame just in case you're going, that's it. Video settings, touch settings, monochrome live view. Peaking, there it is. Where is it? It's under monitor display. All right, I guess that kind of makes sense. So peaking on, off, and set under set, you can do low or high detection. The difference is that when it's in high, it's more accurate, uh, meaning that you have a narrower range of what is going to be in focus when you're doing it. But it is also harder to get focus. So if you're if you're moving around, uh, if you're shooting anything moving, you probably want to do low. If you're shooting something static, you can do high. And then here you can change the color. So if I want to do let's say orange on there, and then go the difference between low and high. So low. I think you can see it still. Let's just get out of there. So you can see there's quite a range. Oops, let's go back up. You can see this, you know, I get, you can see how much I'm moving the focus and it's still showing in focus on the keys, not looking at the screen in the background. On the other hand, if I go back in here and go to high, there we go. Now we're going to have less of a range you can see it because less of a uh, range of focus when it's considered in focus. So that's the difference between low and high. So hope that helps to those who are wondering what the difference was. Um, okay, we can do a whole video on that one day if it's necessary. Probably should. Yeah, we probably should. All right, uh, Zachary again asking about the G the vlog on the GH5. No, I did not get that. Um, uh, Mr. or Miss Clary, because I can only see the last part of the name. Another contribution. Thank you. Great video. You've been a lot of help to me. That is awesome. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm glad that I'm able to be of assistance to people. Okay. Uh, let's see here. On average, how many stops better is the GH5 from the GH4? Uh, uh, I don't know what you mean by better. You're talking higher higher ISO sensitivity, you're talking noise. There's That's a huge open-ended question, so we're not going to address that right now. Uh, it's better. Everything about it is better, so we'll just leave it at that. Okay. Mm hmm. Yeah, LUTs discussion. Oh, there's so much stuff to get into on that. Vlog, Vlog L, LUTs. There's, I mean, this is a whole like massive side course to do. Um, side note for those waiting for GH5 from Amazon, my Vario lens 12 to 35 was updated ETA March 31st, arrival March 3rd. No, no. There you go. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Fuse is saying that LUTs can be made in Resolve. It's the only software I know that does the .vlt file extension. That's probably one of the reasons I'm going to start playing with Resolve because I do want to kind of create my own LUTs and drop them into the camera. That's such a cool thing. Such a cool thing. Okay. All right, guys. 
We're going to kill it off there. Thank you again so much for watching. Thanks to those who did the super chat. For those who are asking about PayPal, my email is joseph at photojoseph.com. Um, please, if you have questions, um, incidentally, post them as comments. I've gotten a few questions as email, and that's fine sometimes, but obviously uh, the, the problem with an email response is that you're the only one who gets it. So unless your question is really, really specific to you and your situation, and even if it is, I might respond back to you and say, hey, please post this as a comment so I can address this publicly, because it's you know the public information, it helps everybody, right? Um, that's what we want to do. We want to help everybody here, not just individuals where possible. So um, if you've got a question, please do post it into the comments here uh, and, and not just default to sending me an email. That would be a better for everybody solution. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, what else? Anything else I want to throw out there? We're good on all this stuff. No promotions elsewhere. Um, you know, do the, you know, the usual, like it, don't like it. If you don't like it, tell me why. Be nice about it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We broke 4,000. That's awesome. We're going to keep on climbing this thing. I love it, love it, love it. And uh, yeah, we're having fun with the show. I think you guys are having fun with this too. It's been educational and entertaining. If you're buying a GH5, links down below. Use one of those, please. And uh, otherwise, that's it. We're going to call it. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.